Meanwhile, Uganda's Ministry of Health late Saturday reported 84 new cases of COVID-19, the highest daily increase so far, bringing the nationwide tally to 413. Out of the 1,835 samples collected from cross-border cargo truck drivers and communities in the last 24 hours, 52 Ugandan truck drivers and 32 contacts of previously confirmed cases under quarantine tested positive for the virus, the ministry said in a statement. It has been the highest daily increase in COVID-19 cases since the index case was confirmed on March 21. A total of 72 recoveries and no death have so far been reported in the country, according to the ministry. And joining us live is Professor Kilian Songwe, a principal consultant. Thank you, Professor Kilian, for joining us on the news. Yes, good afternoon. And how are you doing today? Wonderful. It's a great day out here in Kampala. Great to know. Now, Uganda today had its highest daily cases so far. What do you think is responsible for this? Uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, right now in Uganda, uh, the UN still reports that we still have uh, sporadic cases. And I think uh, the numbers that you just mentioned are truly sporadic. Uh, I think they are all uh, centered in one specific place. There is a region, one of our points of entry called Elegu. And uh, Elegu has been uh, showing some very high numbers of late uh, with the truck drivers in that area. And this is a, a border area uh, with uh, South Sudan. And uh, when we look at the numbers uh, of tests in South Sudan, uh, South Sudan of late has tested less than 10,000 people uh, for its total population. So we're not surprised with the numbers that we are seeing on that particular part of the border. Now, there have been reports of foreign truck drivers returned back to their country of origin instead of them being treated in Uganda. Is this a good idea? I, I, I don't know what's a good idea when it comes to treatment. I think everybody needs treatment uh, as soon as possible so that we don't, uh, the transmission should be reduced. But I think in the East African community, what is going on is the ministers of health uh, have since met. Uh, they've had a couple of meetings where they've had some agreements on uh, cross-border testing and testing of their drivers before they come to the border. So I think uh, as a region, they have an understanding, they have an agreement uh, to be able to test their drivers before they go across borders. And I think the issue here is ensuring that they're implemented. But again, for the country of Uganda and for all the African countries, I want to think the bigger concern that they have, which I think all the countries in the world have the same concern. Uh, you need to think about your hospitalization. How many beds do you have? Uh, what kinds of space do you have to be able to put people in isolation? And if we continue to have these kinds of numbers in Uganda from our border uh, post uh, that are going to be taken care of by Uganda, this is a 42 million uh, population country. And should there be any reason for a spike here? And we've already uh, filled up the houses with uh, point of entry truck drivers, then we might be in a problem because uh, hospitalization beds is one of the big um, key signals for making a determination on the rate of uh, lifting up the, lifting the lockdown. Professor Killian, with over 6 million COVID-19 cases confirmed worldwide and countries are beginning to ease their lockdown because of the economy, don't you think the numbers mm -hmm. will spike? It's a very, very tough decision for countries to make. Uh, I'm just looking at the African continent uh, right now, uh, just uh, last week or the week before, uh, the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa just released a report uh, that shows that over $65 billion is lost per month under the lockdown. So it's a very tough decision for, for, for a, a market such as Africa, that is, uh, in my opinion, a growing market, to be able to stay on a lockdown. Uh, however, I think one of the things that uh, Africa has an advantage to right now is that they're coming way behind the curve. So there are a number of things that uh, as a continent uh, we have learned. Uh, number one, uh, I think understanding the virus in terms of hospitalization rates is, has been very important. Uh, understanding how the lifting of the lockdown is going to happen in a very phased approach is also very important. Uh, however, after all of that is said, yes, uh, if you do uh, a spontaneous lift, uh, lifting of the lockdown, yes, you are going to have a new research uh, in the infection rates across uh, all, any continent that does a, a lift up uh, of the lockdown without a, a much more phased approach. They're going to certainly have a research. Professor Kilian Songwe, thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you so very much indeed for having me.